Hello, I'm Gregor McIntyre of Faithly Parish Church. You've joined Faithly for its online service this week, and we're going to look at the story of the parable of the talents. But let's prepare for worship. Let's praise God who comes to seek the lost. Praise God who comes to heal and mend. Praise God who does not count the cost. Praise Father, Son and Holy Ghost with our first hymn this morning, As the Deer Pants for the Water. Let's pray together. Great and wonderful God, we come before you in humility, in awe, in faith, in hope, in love, in worship. Hear us pray. For we come to praise you and bless you, to adore you and acknowledge you, to salute you and to thank you in our prayers. We come recognising your power, your authority and wisdom, your faithfulness, your goodness and your love. We come confessing our weakness, our unworthiness, our faults, our failings, our faithlessness and our lack of love. Hear us with mercy. We come seeking your mercy and your guidance and your strength, your renewal and inspiration, your living word to answer our prayers. And we commit ourselves to your service, your purpose, your kingdom, your will, your people, and your world. May we not sit back, may we not stand aside, but may we do what can be done with your help for the gospel and the salvation of our Saviour, your Son, our friend and Master Jesus. Amen. The parable of the talents is going to be read this morning uh, in uh, two voices. I'm very pleased to say that Leslie joined me to read this story from Matthew chapter 25. The kingdom will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. To one 
he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags, and to another one bag, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work and gained five bags more. So also the one with two bags of gold gained two more. But the man who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with two bags of gold also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I have gained two more. Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who had received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew that you were a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. You wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. Well then, you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. So take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has 10 bags. For whoever has will be given more, and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, what they have will be taken from them. And throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Leslie, thank you very much for helping with that reading. I'm sure it was brought alive by the two of us sharing in it. Friends, I have been busy reading. It happens. I enjoy uh, a breadth of reading. So I have read science fiction this week, New Scientist, and I've been reading that history of the early days of the Second World War. And in it, just last night, I came across a phrase I've heard before, but it was being used in a precise military fashion. At the start of the Second World War, Germany had made a surprise invasion of Norway and Churchill was desperate to repel Germany. A force had been sent in, but they did not have the ability to control the skies. No airplanes were defending the bombing and the fighters that could be used to dislodge the British forces whilst the German land forces held ground or attacked. The decision to retreat was a bitter one, but it was made on the basis that you don't reinforce failure. Those were the words I read last night, and it made me think of this story, the parable of talents. Consider those whom the Lord is pleased with. He is pleased with those who can tell that they have talents, gifts given from God. Talent is a strange word, meaning both a currency coin as well as a characteristic uh, skill or gift. God has given us talents. And he expects us to use them for the purposes of the gospel. We are expected to use the love, the strength, the help, the kindness, the overflowing mercy, 
the understanding of God's forgiving us and desperate desire to forgive others and welcome them and use them so that our friends, our family and our neighbours know that God reaches out for them with the same love that we know how to celebrate. What God has no use for are those who take that talent and hold it tight and do nothing with it. Just peter their way through the everyday, holding what God has as if it was a coin that could be spent and lost. It won't age. It won't wear out. The worth of who we are and what we can do does not change with the years. We are always able to be of use to God. We can always show love and forgiveness, mercy and kindness and all the other virtues that we know are sourced in God's goodness and given to us by his Holy Spirit. They aren't given by the bank account that ekes out interest in such a slow, low rate just now. In the world of savings and loans, our God is a strange bank because he gives at enormous risk. He gives his riches to human beings who are sinners, who time and again show themselves incapable of always doing the right thing, even when we know what it is. But God gives again and asks us to take part in his work of using what he gives us to let the story be told that even sinners are people whom God invests in. But what God will not do is reinforce failure. That's the story of this parable. The first two servants, nobody's saying they're perfect. They just got on and did what they could. It's the third that fails. And look what happens. Even the one talent he has is taken from him and given away. There is no use for those who do nothing. God won't reinforce that kind of failure. But few of us are such people because we know when we try and fail, we can try again. When it's our fault that we have failed, we go back and ask forgiveness and God invests in us again that we may show that we know about love and kindness and the depth of God's willingness to count us his children and family. So friends, sometime this week you'll come across an offer. The offer might come from the credit card company that's looking for your business. The bank account might arrive in the email or the post and with it that opportunity to take up a loan for that household improvement. But when you look in the mirror and see the man or woman whom God gave gifts to, made for talking and befriending, made for truth telling and demonstrating Christian virtue, for showing forgiveness and being merciful, for demonstrating kindness and gentleness, for making people feel welcome and valuable, then you can spend, 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 because the Lord will see to it that in partnership with you there is good 
coming back. Don't hold tight. Let it go. Let it get spent. Let it get work done. And you will be the richer for it. Because the Lord will say, Come and enjoy my good pleasure in you. And don't hold so tight to what God gives that it does nothing, touches no other life and you'll find that it gets taken and you're the failure God won't invest in. Friends, in a time of pandemic there is no shortage of need. You will find ways to give yourself to others. Look for it. Discover it. Act on it. And God will offer his many blessings to you. We're going to sing again. And we're going to sing that well-known and well-loved hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Friends, our intimations this week would be about two opportunities we have to serve people around us. The first is a reminder that we are able to collect Christmas gifts to be distributed to local families through the social work department. If you have the opportunity to buy a new gift for a boy or girl, then please leave it unwrapped, but bring it in a gift bag to the church on Tuesdays and Friday mornings when the recycle room is open. The gifts will be gathered from there uh, before they are taken to the social work department for their distribution. If you're unable to get to the church, then you can ask perhaps your elder 
or, or ask if I can pick up your parcel and take it to the church. If you are unable to spend time shopping uh, for gifts because you're either wary of being out for len a length of time or any other reason is keeping you from doing that, you have a second opportunity to contribute to our local area. A collection has been started to purchase Chromebooks for Eden Barnet School. Already £140 has been donated and that's well on its way to buying the first Chromebook or laptop for the school. They're of incredible use to many of the lessons the children undertake day by day uh, and when children have been isolated or if the school was to be closed then such uh, laptops are able to go home to enable children to keep up with their lessons. So we're making it possible for the school to have more of these valuable tools for class use and if they were necessary during any class or school lockdown. A cash donation can be brought to the recycle room on Tuesday and Friday mornings between 10 and 12 or can be passed on to an elder or give me a message and I'll come to the door and take a donation from you. Please remember that both uh, collections of either gifts or of money are both voluntary, voluntary. There is no obligation in taking part in either of them. Those are our intimations this morning. Let's now come together and pray. And this morning there will be a short period of silence for you to bring your prayers Lord, hear us pray for those close to home calling to mind the name or face of somebody in our own family who means much to us in our church congregation or is a friend. In the quiet, we hold them before you and ask you to bless them in their daily life. Living God, you know our hearts and all our hearts. We give them to you now and invite you to come close to those we have prayed for, bringing them your healing, your comfort and your hope. And we would pray for situations further afield, taking a moment to pray for something that we have heard in the news that troubles us. Perhaps for someone we have never met, but whose story has touched us in the last days. In our quietness, we hold these people and their stories before you, Lord. Lord God, you know those who are thirsty in this world and need to be slaked with thirst, guidance and help. In this world, bring your guidance to such lives we have prayed for, that they may know how to trust in your strength and presence. Finally, we spend a moment praying for our church perhaps for Faithley's congregation, the wider church, or all people of faith. In the quiet we pray for those who will share this time of worship and praise your name the world round. Living God, Help us to be your hands and feet in the world. May we discover you are the energy to act in love and act in gospel truth. 
yours is the power that transforms our lives and makes it possible for good to be done in your name and in our lives. Bless those who know how to praise you that they may know how to actively serve you. And these prayers we offer in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray together saying, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'm delighted that this week Ewan has been able to record not just our hymns but our voluntary to close the service as well. Ewan, we're delighted that your arm is recovering well enough that you are able to do all of that for us. And you've picked up on the theme of the bags of gold that were given out in the parable for a medley on the theme of money. We're all going to enjoy listening to that. Let's close with our blessing. Now may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen.